Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of The Head Start, Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abvi. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they took action to understand this disease. So jump into the conversation for season two, a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey and learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids to a classroom? Homes.com knows that these are all the things that you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Summer is upon us, and whatever you have going on, a vacation, a staycation, a summer wedding, well, Macy's has you covered. If you need summer dresses, matching sets, volume sleeve tops, wedges, straw-crafted bags, I mean, really, they have what you need head to toe. I'm talking Levi's, Dolce Vita, Lacoste, and more. So shop summer must-haves at Macy's. Go to Macy's.com slash own your style. Again, that's Macy's.com slash own your style. Something I for sure love having in my home is super clean countertops. And I love when it smells good too. So you can bring the vacation vibes to your home with coconut scented Clorox and Tiva. It smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy with a refreshing scent that'll transform your space into a tropical island retreat and give you a powerful clean. No plane ticket required. Unleash your self-expression with the enchanting coconut fragrance of Clorox and Tiva. You can get yours at a nearby retail store, also available in grapefruit or lavender scents. Life ain't always pretty, but hey, it's pretty beautiful thing. Laugh a little more thing. Tight, tighten up your core thing. Said he came. You're kicking it with four things. With Amy Brown. Happy Thursday. I am pumped to have on podcaster and best selling author and friend of mine for many years, Jamie Ivey. She is back on the Four Things podcast today because she has a new book coming out called UBU, Why Satisfaction and Success Are Closer Than You Think. Jamie does all four things with me, and we discuss false definitions of success, living your story, contentment versus discontentment, and lastly, finishing well. I really hope you enjoy our chat, and you can check out Jamie's podcast. It's called Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey. And then if you want to pre-order her book, which is officially out October 1st, depending on when you're listening to this, you can go to ubu.net, or I linked it on my Amazon Favorites page under books, which you can find at radioamy.com. And also at radioamy.com, you can find a link to our Fall Four Things Pullovers that release this Saturday, September 12th. And if you love fall, you're definitely going to want to get one of the two pre-made options that we're putting up, or maybe maybe both. One is maroon, one is burnt orange, and they both say a different four things, and they're so cute. I'm wearing mine all the time, and I, we just hope you love them as much as we do. And you can wear and rep our four things community. Like I feel like anytime y'all use anything for things, it's part of our little community here. And you can feel good knowing that these pullovers and then everything is is supporting my life speaks the next couple of months and they're doing amazing work in Haiti. Okay. Well, here is my interview with Jamie Ivy. Enjoy. First thing. I have my friend Jamie Ivy here. She's been on the podcast before. And before we started recording, I was like, you know what, Jamie? I just want you to be you. And we laughed a little bit because this is exciting. Jamie has another book coming out and it's called You Be You. You Be You. And we're going to go into like yeah, yeah, yeah. four different parts of the book. But I think that that's something that sometimes we struggle with is being a chameleon to whatever yes. audience we're with. Yes. And it's like, well, 
what's what's the point? Well, it's funny because the way you said it to me, I was like, okay, I mean, like, tell me about your audience. I want to like meet them where they are. And you weren't trying to be funny and just said, I want you to be you. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's true. That's what I want to be is I want to be me. But this is why, Amy, and I don't know if you've ever struggled with this. I would guess you have because I think everyone has struggled with this, that we look around and we think she's killing it. She's awesome. Her kids are great. Her marriage is great. Her job is awesome. She doesn't have any struggles. If I could just be her, I'd be happy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me too. I know. And again, our conversation before is private too, but I think that if people could be a fly on the wall for that, they would realize if they look at your Instagram or my Instagram or wherever they're getting their bird's eye view of our yeah. life from, if they could be a fly on the wall for certain things, they would learn really quickly that it, there's, it's, it, there's a lot well, that people don't know and that we're going through and nobody is perfect and has it all together and this dream life. That's so true. It's yeah. so true. And I I think I talk about that a lot with people about Instagram. You love Instagram. I love Instagram. It's my favorite place to hang out. I don't know if it's your favorite. Do you like it that much? It's my, for social media, yeah. it's my favorite one. Me too. It's my mm-hmm. favorite because I feel like it's nice, you know, and people aren't going to Mm -hmm. for the most part come at you. But I always think like when I look at someone's Instagram, I think, oh, I see some great things about them, but I don't see their whole life. And here's why I know that because people don't see my whole life on my Instagram. You know, like what I put up is it's it's a what I want you to see. It's not a lie by any means. It's just not the entire whole story. Right. And so we have to be careful as intake of social media to know that when you're seeing someone else and you think, if I had her life, I'd be so happy. There's more to her life than you actually know. And that's what we have to remember too. Because if you start to believe that, we could sit down and name five people that were like, oh, if I could have her life, like I see on Instagram. And if we brought that person in here, they'd be like, let me tell you the hard things we're going through. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this. Be like, oh, we're more alike than we thought. Like we... We have the same struggles. Yeah. I think that we often look at certain people and what they've achieved and think, okay, now that's success. Yes. So what are some false definitions of success or, you know, more importantly, why do we need to throw them out the window? Success is this weird word because we want it, but I don't think we always know what that means. And so I think success is kind of a moving target. So let's say I'll use you as an example. You work at this radio station or we'll use your podcast. So let's say your podcast gets this many downloads and your boss comes to you and is like, okay, awesome. And you think, oh, I'm a success. And then like, okay, but now you need more. Like, good job, but you need more. Or you think, oh, a successful parent is someone who their kids say yes, ma'am and no, ma'am. They follow all the rules. They obey you. They love you. And they turn out to be great human beings. Like that feels successful. And we want that, right? Oh, I want that so bad. Oh, I want that so bad too. Like we want that so bad. But I think that we can't actually ever reach the target. It's a moving target. So it's moving with marriage. It's moving with parenting. It's moving with jobs. So this is what I'm thinking, Amy, is instead of me saying, I want to be a successful mom, because what everyone says a successful mom is, is is that her kids turn out great. But honestly, what if one of my kids doesn't? Am I a failure? No. No. So instead, I'm like, how about I just be a faithful mom, which means I'm going to be a faithful mom to these kids that God gave me. I'm going to faithfully love them. I'm going to faithfully teach them. But what they choose to do with their lives is not my responsibility. Do Should I be a good mom? Yes. But I'm going to be faithful. So my goal is to be faithful, not to be successful. In my job, my goal is to be faithful, not successful, because what happens when I reach what I think is success and then I find out there's more actually? Like you're not actually at the end. It's constantly moving. So I think that's draining for me to try to always be quote unquote successful based on what someone else says. I can't do that. I can't be Amy. Like I cannot be your success because that's for you. But I can be faithful Jamie and I can do what I'm supposed to do. And that takes a lot of weight off me. And how do we stop the blame game of if something goes wrong at work or if something goes wrong with one of our kids? Because yes, I can hear you say that and I can receive it and be like, okay, yeah, if one of my kids has an episode of XYZ going on with themselves and I feel like, oh, I maybe triggered this or I messed up or something I did and now look at what they're struggling with. Now I hear what you're saying and I know deep down it's not me, but somehow I guess I feel like with work, and being a mom, I take the responsibility. Kind of like as any boss, it's ultimately, I feel like it falls on me. So how do we give ourselves permission to release that? Yeah, it's hard. I guess that's where the faithfulness comes in. Yes. And as like a working mom too, if we're talking about parenting, like sometimes I feel like, okay, because I'm with you right now in Nashville. My four children are not here. And so there's this kind of burden. I don't feel it this much because, listen, we've been in the middle of COVID. I was like, peace out, kids. I'm going to Nashville. I will see you later. But there's this kind of sense of like, oh, if I can't be with my kids, I'm not a good mom. I'm not being able to 
give them what they need. But also I'm like, love my job. And I'm also good at that. And so I can do both. But it's just like, what is my, my goal is to be faithful instead of my goal is to be successful because success is, like I said, it's a moving target. Like, what if my kids go through a really hard time? And then I'm like, I'm the same mom. Like I'm still being faithful to what he called, what God asked me to do. So it's this faithfulness that you have to like, this is going to be my goal. This is going to be my end game. Now it's a whole nother podcast, Amy, about how we as moms deal with like, I feel like it is my fault. And I feel like I'm blaming myself because I struggle with that. You and I, we talk about that before. That's hard. That's hard stuff. Oh, for sure. I think that it's just maybe like some sort of a mantra and reminder of I'm not going to define success this way anymore. And I'm going to remind myself, like, I'm doing my best. Yeah. I'm doing what I was called to do. Yes. And kind of just over and but over until it, <laughs> until it seeps in. But then I feel like you, even you writing this book and focusing on some of that and part of it, like, you probably still have to remind yourself. I, I think sometimes our listeners are like, okay, they've got it all figured out. Mm-mm. But we're mm-hmm. sitting over here struggling just like you. And so like with my job as a podcaster, obviously numbers matter. Downloads matter. Like it's my job. No one's, I don't make a living if people don't listen to my job. So there's that thin line of, I, I want to be successful with my show. But also let's say that my show, like there's like 8,000 podcasts right now, you know? And so not everyone can listen to every show every week, you know? So let's say the numbers aren't growing at the speed that they used to. Am I a failure? I don't think so. Because I'm faithfully doing, You're doing what, what you I do. need mm-hmm. to be doing for my show every week. And so the show I put out, I'm proud of it. I love it. I'm faithful to do what I think that God's asked me to do. And will it be number one? Probably not. Do I want it to be? Absolutely. You know, so it's not like I'm like, I don't care what happens in life. No, like I want to do my best. But also when I change my mindset, I'm going to be faithful. That means... When it's number 50, number 20, number one, number 10, I still lay my head down at night and be like, I did exactly what you asked me to do. Yeah. And people can apply that to anything. Anything. I I mean, switching the mindset, that's huge. And I don't know that I am good at doing that, but I'm going to really try. I know that this was everything that I needed to do for my job, for my kids, for my friends or whatever. And then- And there are some days- If it doesn't work, it's not my fault. Exactly. And there are some days that you're going to be telling yourself that every 45 seconds. (laughs) Okay. I'm faithful. I'm going to be the best mom I can. Okay. And that's, that's my job right now. Okay. I just adopted it. That's my mantra. I am faithful. Yeah. I'm I'm going to be faithful. Love it. Second thing. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is how do we live our story? How do we know how to use the gifts that we've been given? Where, how do we find those? I feel like last week on my podcast, I was talking about honing your skills Mm -hmm. and then knowing like your mission statement of sorts. Do you have a mission statement? Oh, I don't. Oh, okay. Do you? I'm working on one. Oh, my okay. husband's working on one. I am. And then we're working on one for our family. So you will each individually have one and then mm-hmm. you'll have a family one. Yeah. Like what are our goals? What do we want to be and how are we going to do it? And it's sort of making a little proclamation of what, what do you want to live for? Are you having the kids do it? So no, not yet. Okay. Maybe it is something we'll have them do, but we're both in our own therapy and it's just, he brought it up. And then I was doing some research on how to be a human being and not human doing because my therapist uh-huh. told me I was in doing mode yeah. so much. Uh-huh. So we're working on a mission statement. So I didn't know when it came to living your story or trying to use the talents you've been given. I like, need a mission ha- statement. I'm on yeah. this now, Amy. Okay. I'll get back with you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting is when you and I talk about like living out your story and doing what you're called to do and finding your passions and your gifts. You and I both started doing what we're doing kind of the same way. Like you started in radio a weird way. And so did I. And it's changed our whole lives. Do you see that? Like, did you ever wake up one day and you're like, I am going to be. No, I had zero aspirations for radio. The, me too. Yeah. And but we both that's a part of our careers now today. And I think that's so yeah. crazy because And back in Austin, Texas, uh, yes. when you were at KVET and I was at KHFI, we we, we met in the see hall each other down in the there. hall yes. and be like, what are we doing? Exactly. <laughs> and that's so funny to me because I think so many times we're like, what is my calling? What is my gifting? What am I supposed to do? And sometimes honestly, I feel like you just kind of take the next step right in front of you and it might seem weird and it might seem crazy and you never know what that's going to lead to. And both you and I did that. We just were like well, I don't know. This sounds like interesting. Let's fun and let's do this. And then here we are all these years later, still doing parts of that job that we, well, you're still doing the same job and I'm doing a different job, but we're doing yeah. things that we didn't know or plan to do. Kind of same job, but very, very 
very different. Like I never <laughs> thought it would be. I mean, we kind of oh, thought know. we were just in Austin, one market, hanging out. I was like on a country radio station. Yeah, we were doing pop. Y'all did pop. Yeah, so yes. it's, it's, there's been some changes. But I think sometimes we're just thinking, how do I find out what I'm supposed to do? Like, what is my lifelong mission? Like you kind of said with that, but what am I supposed to do? And I sometimes think that you kind of go through life and there's turns and there's pivots and there's things that you didn't know you were going to try and that you were going to do. And I've learned that to find like what my calling is, sometimes I think it's just looking around and seeing what's the need, like what is happening around me. I have a friend who always says the need is the call. And I have found that when I have like spent time volunteering in certain areas or even us leading to our family, like the way our family's been formed is I just kind of looked around and was like, oh, where's the need here? I could do that. Like I spent a handful of years volunteering in this in this organization that worked in our county jail. Like I would have never imagined doing that. I never set out to do like jail ministry, but a friend just said like, we're starting this. Do you want to be a part of it? And I was like, yes, I have the time. I have the space, I have the capacity. And it seems like something I would enjoy. And I ended up doing it for three years, but I never would have said like, oh, I'm called to jail ministry. That's like going to be a part of my life plan. But I just said yes. I think that's a part of it, too. It's just like, how are we going to say yes to things and and see where they take us? And to me, I feel the most satisfied when I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and not what you're supposed to do or anyone else. Like I can look at my life and go, this is where I'm supposed to be. And it looks different than other people's. But I'm really happy here. Yeah, I love like the need is the call. So Mm -hmm. your friend presented you something to do that was a need and you took it. Do you struggle with what you should say yes to? I don't really know this about you if you're a yes person or uh, you're okay with Mm -hmm. saying no and setting boundaries. I have struggled it before a handful of years ago. I read a book called The Best Yes. It's by a woman named Lisa Turkhurst. And at that time I was going, I'm saying yes to everything and I feel really exhausted. I got four kids. I wasn't even doing really what I'm doing now, but I was just saying, anyone needed something? Yes. Okay, I can do it. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't know if this book encouraged me to do this or I just did it, but I made a list of the like the four most important things in my life, like family, obviously, but career wise. And then I decided that if it didn't fall under one of those categories, I had to say no to it for the next year. And I remember, Amy, someone inviting me to do something and it felt like big kind of like this could be a lot of fun this is a really big deal and I said yes and then I remembered the list I made and like I tried to fit it in one of them and like I couldn't fit it in like it didn't fall under any of those yeses and I had to call her back and say I couldn't do it and I felt like a loser for going back on my word and I also felt mad that I had made that stinking list ever but it ended up being like exactly what I needed to do because I'd made a commitment I'm only going to say yes to these things so yes that used to be hard for me now I pretty am like if it doesn't fit in my life space, I'm going to say no to it. Oh, I like that. Like, I have do you to do say, field trips? What With what? My kids? Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't really had to because of coronavirus lately, but no. See, that's the uh, thing that's always been that, weird for me it. is I'm not a field trip mom. Okay. And so, but saying no to that, I always felt like I'm the worst mom. Like who's, who like has the chance to go on a field trip that says no? Well, me, I don't like field trips. I mean, is it truly a need though? I'm sure they have other moms. <laughs> Right? (laughs) Surely they do. I don't know that that's a need. But what I'm saying is I realize that that's okay if I say no to that. Like I'm not a bad mom if I can't go to the zoo with my kids. And my kids are older, so I'm not doing field trips anymore. And I would actually probably like their field trips these days. Like, hey, who wants to go to Washington, D.C.? Me. I'll go on that trip. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, I'll go on that. But I just had to figure out like it's okay if I say no to that because that's not me. Yeah. (laughs) I had to say no to something the other day and not because I had made a list like you, but you're encouraging me to do that. I think that that's so many things come through and they're good things and it's really easy to just not want to hurt anybody's feelings or make them feel like you're not grateful Uh and to just say yes is yes and I had to yeah send a note the other day that again not because I have a list but I was just looking at how I had been stretched then even just emotionally and time wise and then carving out time for rest Mm -hmm. and family and if I keep saying yes then that that stuff dwindles down And I sent the note and I was nervous about it. And she replied back with such grace. I love that. And so that is scary as it is sometimes to say no, people can surprise you. I think it's also like that's a good reminder to us when we're on the receiving end of someone being like, hey, I can't do this because I need to rest to not be offended and to be like, 
good for you. I'm proud of you for doing that in your life. So that was good that your friend responded that way. So do you feel like uh, responding to the need and then that being your calling, even if it's just for three years, it doesn't mean you're committing the rest of your life. Like that's you living, you know, your story and leaving your deepest mark. Yes, that's what I think. It's like, I think that we think we need to have a sentence long calling. And me as a, as a Christian, I think there is a bigger calling on my life. Like I want, as someone who loves God, I want other people to love God. So that's a calling for me that never changes. You know, like I want my kids to love God. I want my friends to love God. I want people that I know to love God. So for me, that's a big deal. And I think all those other things kind of fall underneath there. You know, like me serving in the prison ministry, that was great. I used to be a teacher. I used to teach Sunday school at my church. Like all these things, I think we're a part of my story. And they just look different. It's fluid, yes. And that's okay. And that's good. You have to remember that though, when you look at someone else's life and think, how does she have what she has And you have to dig deeper to be like, well, she used to do this and she used to do that. And she started here. Like you said, you started at this one little station in Austin and that was it. And you never expected to be here. So it's not like you wrote down my calling is to be in, I don't know, 800,000 places at one time. Yeah. You could have never imagined that. No, and I still don't even know that that I, I still struggle with waking up. I mean, of course, I love what I do and I love who I work with. And then even doing a podcast. I mean, you were in the podcast game way before anybody. You're for sure my first friend that had mm-hmm. a podcast. Yeah. And then, you know, and I even work in the industry. So when Bobby came to me and said, I think you should do a podcast. I'm going to start a network. I thought, oh, really? What am I going to talk about? Right. I mean, who, why would I do a podcast? I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. And the only radio experience I had was by his side the entire time. And he's like, I think it's time that you just go spread your wings, mm. do it yourself. And it took me probably a year to get it together and finally put out an episode yeah. and do what I needed to do. Life took some turns and I had to keep postponing it. But I really think I kept saying no, 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 but not permanently, just yeah. not right now. Yeah. But obviously I knew I had to do it, but I didn't ever feel called. But then I thought, okay, well, Bobby's saying that there's a need here for me. Yeah. I guess now I'm using your language and thinking of how I approached it. And I was like, I guess I'll just go and see where this goes. Mm-hmm. And then now I've been and doing it a couple it. years and I really do enjoy yeah. it. And yeah. I love connecting with my community and yeah. having my own group outside of the Bobby Pod Show. Show. Now, a lot of them might be from that, which is yeah. amazing. But some people come from other yeah. parts that don't know. And then we just have this connection. Yeah. I mean, if someone said to me recently, they're like, Jamie, if you think about it, when you were in college, uh, and I'm 42, so when I was in college, there, there were no podcasts. Like, there was no iPhone. No. And so to think like the career that I have now didn't even exist when I was in college. So if you're listening and you're in college, who knows what you're going to be doing in 20 years that might not even be exist in existence in 2020. Yes. That's crazy. Right out of college, I was selling granite. And oh, look at I- you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really fun job. I loved it. I worked with all my friends. But I kind of thought that's what I was going to do the rest of my life and travel the world, going to quarries like in Italy and that does sound lovely, Brazil, Amy. And it was like that was my goal. Mm. And then I met Bobby at Culver's. So it was just so um, funny. And changed everything. But okay, I love that. Like the need is your calling. Yeah, look around. What is it? What is it? And yeah. then that might lead to X, which leads to Y, which leads to Z. You just don't and then know. You yeah. Open your eyes one day. Yeah. And, voila, you're sitting in there Nashville you <laughs> with your friend talking about all the crazy things. Yeah. In every pair of Tacova's boots, you can expect handmade quality, first wear comfort, and timeless Western style. A great pair of Western boots will elevate a casual look or add a refined flair that'll draw both eyes and compliments. Tacova's boots are always made from premium bovine and exotic leathers, and with occasional resoling, they will last a lifetime. Now, the best way to shop for boots is at your local Tacova store, where you're going to be greeted by the smell of fresh leather and a friendly smile. So come on in, grab a cold one, get fitted by a pro, and shop the latest styles. They also offer custom branding and leather stamping if you want to personalize your boots or fine leather goods. And stay cool in a short sleeve moisture wicking pearl snap. Or make your own shade with one of their classic straw hats, new in both men's and women's styles. And if you're planning to hit the road, Tacova's ever-growing lineup of rugged and full-grain leather bags will get you where you're headed in style, and they are built to last decades. Visit Tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S.com. And don't go gently, y'all. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Something that I've learned in therapy is that goals are really important. Like, 
It can really help you out. Like when life is going so fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate how far you've come, celebrate those wins, but also look forward to where you're going. Make adjustments for the rest of the year. And therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next three months, the next six months. I have personally benefited from therapy in so many ways. I feel like we'd be here all day if I were to tell you all of the ways therapy has helped me out, giving me tools to have my back pocket for when we need to bust them out, coping skills, how to set boundaries. I feel so much more empowered uh, because of therapy. So I'm very thankful for it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, well, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash four things today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four things. Again, you're going to get 10% off your first month. I don't want to waste my time taking vitamins that aren't really going to do much for me. Like I want research. I want to know like, hey, this is actually doing something for my body. And Ritual knows this. That's why they conducted the research. They've done clinical trials on their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. The results, well, it increased vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. And as a woman, I want healthy vitamin D levels and omega-3 levels. And all I got to do is take my Ritual Essential for Women 18 Plus Multivitamin every morning. I take them on an empty stomach, but sometimes if I forget, I may take them in the afternoon. It's really up to you when you want to take them. There's nine key nutrients in two delayed release capsules. And what the delay release capsules does for us is it optimizes our body's absorption of these nutrients. It's gentle on the empty stomach. Like I said, I can take it first thing in the morning and I'm totally fine. And with a minty essence in every bottle, it actually makes taking your vitamins enjoyable. No more shady business. Ritual is essential for women. 18 plus is a multivitamin that you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month at ritual.com slash four things. Start ritual or add essential for women. 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash four things for 25% off. All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. Here we go. Third thing. Uh, 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 okay, let's one. talk contentment versus discontentment. This is hard. This is really hard because to be content means to be like, I'm satisfied with my life, with my circumstances, with how things are going. And honestly, sometimes that feels like like it's unattainable. Everything feels hard sometimes. You know, life feels difficult. I don't know how I can be content with where I am or who I'm with or all the things. And I think that when we are doing and being and living as we're supposed to be, like as me being myself, as me trusting my gifts and my talents and my passions, me really saying, I want to be me. I don't want to be anybody else. I want to be Jamie Ivy is when I can start to feel more satisfied with who I am and satisfied with what I'm doing, which leads to more contentment as well. And I think that discontentment can lead to envy. It can lead to jealousy. It can lead to so many different things. And I don't want any of those in my heart, even though they creep in a lot, if I'm honest. And so for me, having to fight those, one of the best ways that I fight envy and jealousy and discontentment in the life that I'm living is by being a cheerleader for other people. I think that that is one way that we can really, really, really fight that in our own hearts is to be happy when someone else has something that maybe you desire. Like you've talked about infertility on Bobby Bones show, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So nothing new here. When you and your husband were walking through that, 
I'm sure there were moments when you were like, I'm angry. I hate God. Mm-hmm. Were there also moments when you're like, I'm genuinely happy for my friend? Oh, for pregnant. sure. Uh, you- no, my sister has had four babies <sighs> pregnant wise, like yeah. out of herself. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess I just want to make sure yeah. you clarify there. None are adopted. So she's gotten pregnant four times. When we were trying to get pregnant, I remember literally taking a pregnancy test and then getting a text same day from a friend announcing her pregnancy, pregnancy, which I was happy. And I've done segments on this podcast about giving people permission to tell their friends how they really feel and what they're going through and that they are happy for them, but not to carry that weight of the envy and the, for me, it's okay that you feel that. Like, of course. don't, Don't stick with it. Let's not... You want that, and I think it's okay if it's your real friend, that you can say, gosh, I really want that for myself. And if you maybe can't pull it together to make it to a a brunch or a baby shower because it's too hard, I I try to give people that permission. Now, hopefully you can, but if you can't, it is okay. And that friend should understand because it's very hard and can feel very lonely. Yeah. In that, can I, I'm going to ask you one more question. In those moments when you were like, I am genuinely happy for you, like I'm genuinely happy for you. Did you feel a little bit more content in where you were? I mean, because you still have the emotions. You still have the like, I would give like my left arm to be pregnant. Like you still are like, I would give anything. But I would suspect in all those years, there were probably moments where you would go, I'm genuinely happy for my friend. Yes. Yes. I was always genuine in my sister and I love my friend's kids and my nieces and my nephews. And I wouldn't, uh, for whatever reason, once I got past, again, I think I addressed those feelings. And then when I started to see that there was other, I wouldn't have Stevenson and Stashira if I had gotten pregnant. Uh And everybody's life just takes different paths. But sometimes you have to be a little bit on the other side Uh of those negative uh, pregnancy tests to then appreciate okay, why I went through that yeah. and what am I going to do to find a need Yes, and where can I come in and yeah. fill it? And now it becomes my life's yeah. purpose. So I think when you're genuinely happy for that person and you're genuinely cheering them on, yeah. it helps you fight jealousy and envy. Okay. Again, those feelings are not bad or wrong and it's not like you shouldn't feel that way. But that laying in bed of, I am so jealous of her. I'm so envious of her. I want her life so badly. That can be healthy because that is totally saying she has everything and I have nothing. And I just don't think that's true either. And that's a whole nother conversation as well of like, well, you just think the grass is greener. You always think the grass is greener, but it's not all you have grass right in front of you, you know, that is yours. And so for me, cheering women on in a professional place as well is like, okay, you maybe got what I think I want or deserve when I am so happy for you and I can be a cheerleader for you and I wish you the best, it's really hard for me to then sit in that jealousy and envy. So for me, contentment has been a lot of me going, I'm going to look at my life and see that this is where God wants me and this is what he has for me, the good, the bad, the ugly, the, all the things. And I'm also going to look at your life and think I'm so happy that that is where you're supposed to be and what you're doing. And listen, for the listener, I fully understand this is hard work. Like, I'm not saying like, oh, just say these things and then you'll be like, everything will be great. This is really hard work. You and I both know that. It's hard work of every day going, okay, she has what I want, but I want to look at what I have and how can I do the best with what I have? Because also, this feels like a soapbox for me, Amy, but I feel like when we look at our life, our children, our not having children, our spouses, our friends, our community, our job, whatever it is, there's nothing wrong with wanting to do better and there's nothing wrong with wanting to succeed. But I think where it gets tricky is when we look at the people that God has put in front of us to influence, and I believe everyone's an influencer, whether you're like PTA president, CEO of whatever, everyone's an influencer. And and I feel like when you look at those people and you think, I want to influence those people over there, you're looking at the people that God has given you influence over and saying, you don't matter. Like, you're not enough. You're not worth me putting my time into. And that could be your classroom. It could be your whole organization. It could be your family. It could be your community. And I want to be someone who looks at the people that God has given me, family, community, professional, and go, you matter enough for me to give you my best. That's what I want to do. And I don't want to constantly wish I had her people because I feel like I'd be more successful or more liked or more whatever. I want to focus on who you've put in front of me. That's been really good for me. 
Yeah. I feel like since I used the cliche earlier of the grass is always greener when it's not, I'll go ahead and follow it up with another one of watering your own grass. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. <laughs> because yep. it might seem brown for mm-hmm. a reason. Like, yeah. What are you doing to invest back in? And I think when it comes back to any envy or jealousy, I've been trying to lean into some of those feelings lately instead of suppressing them Mm -hmm. or at least acknowledging that they're there Yeah, so that they don't manifest as something else later where I'm being tacky and icky and ugh. I feel like they have power over you Mm -hmm. when you don't say like, I see you. (laughs) Like, I know you're here and I'm going to fight against it. But if you kind of don't acknowledge it, Right. Feels like it wins a little bit. Yeah. We don't want it to win. No, we don't. What about fully embracing gifts? Like if we don't do that, what are we missing out yeah, on? Yeah, I think when I talk about like fully embracing the gifts you've been given, I think the problem, if we even go back a little bit, the problem is that is that we look around at other people's talents or gifts or influence or power or whatever, their voice, whatever they might have, and go, those are the best possible things to have. Like she has this talent. If I had that, like she, let's just say like she has the talent of, you know, hospitality. You go into this woman's office, her work, her classroom, whatever it might be, and you feel so at home and you think, I don't have that gift. She must be a better woman than me. Mm-hmm. And again, there's nothing wrong. Everyone should feel like like hospitable to people, right? But we know some people who you're like, I feel so at home. Like you're the most hospitable person I've ever met. Like I wish I had more of that. And so there's this like, yes, we need to be hospitable. But then we also have to go like, God has given her something special. And like, that's something that she can like own and she can stand tall in and she can shine in that. But he's given me other special gifts that maybe she doesn't have so much of. And I need to be proud of the way God made me. And I think if we go back a little bit, we have to quit making other gifts and talents seem better. Like people might look at you and I'd be like, oh, that must be awesome because they get to be on a radio show, host podcasts, all the things. They are better women than we are. But that's just the way God has made us and it's the places he put us and it's the talents he's given us and it's the way that our life has worked out. But it doesn't make you or I any better than the amazing woman who runs the shelter downtown Nashville for the homeless community and nobody knows her name. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. She has amazing gifts I don't and have talents. That gift, Me right. neither. And so I want to cheer her on and be happy for her and not think, oh, if you're a public personality, then you're better than everyone else because that's just not true. You know, and I want people who are living their best life right where God has planted them to trust that they're doing the best thing they could possibly do. Four things with Amy Brown. So after we find our version of success or faithfulness, Mm -hmm. and then we use our gifts and we try to live our story and we find contentment, we're doing all that to live a life that we're proud of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard because I don't want to sound morbid by any means, but we're all going to die. Like all of us are going to die. It's the way life works, you know, and all of us that are listening, you and I, we've all lost people close to us. We've seen that happen. I really started thinking about this a lot. Two years ago, I lost a friend unexpectedly. She was 37, four girls. Really like you feel like she was in the prime. Like she was doing so many amazing things and she was so lovely. Amy, you would really liked her. I remember it was such a shock and I thought, God, this doesn't seem fair and this doesn't seem right. And so I had to wrestle through that, right? Like, well, I don't understand why you let this happen. So I went to her funeral and it was a really good funeral. And that feels weird to say, but every person that talked about her, it's like there was this theme. And I left there thinking everyone that talked about her said she lived her days well. And I left there thinking, okay, so I'm not guaranteed 80. Like, how do we yeah, know? She was 37. She was 37. Yeah. Like, how, I, I'm, no one says, Jamie, you, you have 80 years to live. What if I have 45? It doesn't, you know, who knows? And I made a decision after that funeral. I thought, I want to, no matter how many years I get, I want to get to the end and say I lived them well, which means I don't want to sit around and wish I was somebody I was never made to be. Because the worst thing, Amy, would be for me to be 80, dying, and look back and think, I always wanted to be something else and now it's over. I didn't ever really truly want to be me. I didn't ever truly want to live into the places and potential that God had for me. And so that was a little bit of a wake up call for me to say, I want to live every day like it matters. That also sounds like a cliche statement, like, okay, every day matters, but I kind of think it does. You know, like we don't know what's going to happen. We don't, We don't know how much time. We don't know if we're going to get sick or whatever. And 
I just want to live every day matters. And for me personally, that means trusting that God loves me. That means trusting that God likes me. It means trusting that God has a plan for me. It means trusting that God has given me gifts and talents and a purpose. And I want to walk in them and not wishing that my life look like someone else's because that's draining to always think that. And it's exhausting and it's never satisfying. Yeah, I think as my mom was wrapping up her cancer battle, which we knew was ultimately resulting in death, we had time to prepare for Mm -hmm. it. We were like, you were shocked when your friend went away at 37. So we had an opportunity of hospice and being with her and knowing that the end is near. And she was doing so much reflecting. Mm. And you could see her just thinking about her life. And she would say things to me and my sister, Christy, like, I just don't know that I I lived uh, my best life or I don't know that I was the mom that y'all needed me to be. And I don't think she was looking for affirmation from us like, oh, no, mom, you were, you yeah, were, yeah, you yeah. were. That's what I think anybody, we're going to be left with that, that re- wrestling mm-hmm. with, did we do life well? Yeah. And of course, we looked at her and said, mom, you did life well. And whatever she was feeling at the time, wherever she was having that discontentment that maybe she didn't live up to where she thought she should have. I feel as though she was doing her best, which is kind of back at the beginning where we started this talk was we're doing our best. She was faithful to so many different things. Was she perfect? No. None of us are. And that's okay. Yeah. She was faithful. Amy, this is a side note, but do you remember when you were on my podcast I have interviewed a lot of people like you have, and there's some that stand out forever. I remember you talking about the end of your mom's life and when your when your dad came in to talk to your mom. And and that that moment that you shared on my show, I've never forgotten it. And I don't I just feel like I just had this moment of like, I remember when that, and that feels to me also like your dad was having this moment too, of like, I want to do this right. Like I, I get to do this right. And like he had an opportunity to do that. You know, yeah, and because it was presented to him, and he got to kind of make things right, and I feel like that too is like, and we don't always get it. I shouldn't say that, but your dad got the opportunity, and I feel like that. I want to remember that as well is to live my life so well that I see those opportunities too to make things right as well. Yeah. And my mom's patience, even with that, just for new listeners to get. If you haven't heard the story, you can go listen to me on Jamie Ivy's podcast, which was probably what, oh, it was 2000 forever ago, <laughs> sixteen <laughs> it was maybe a long time ago. So it was a while ago, but still, it was awesome <sighs> coming on. So thank you for having me. And yes, I would encourage people to go check it out. It's the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivy. I don't know how to. They can just type in Amy Brown, yep, Jamie Ivy, it, yep. and it'll come up. Mm-hmm. But my parents were not together. My dad left when I was eight. And then towards the end of her life, he kind of had another marriage but got divorced. And then suddenly we were his family again. And I was like, okay, welcome back. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, my mom would have taken him back all those years. And she was trying to be faithful to that because that's what she felt she wanted for her life. And my dad just wasn't there yet. And then suddenly when she had cancer, he wanted her back. He's (laughs) like, so you want to go on a date? She's like, I'm a little busy here. I've got (laughs) chemo at Indy Anderson and then radiation. So... But he would take her to Houston for her yeah. appointments. It was weird. But then, yeah, when she was in hospice and a few days before she died, she had waited 25 years for him to say he was sorry yeah. and for leaving. And and she didn't need that. She had forgiven him. But she also, even though she was busy with cancer, she knew because Christy and I were like, Mom, Dad wants to take you out. Like We prayed for this since we were kids for our parents to yeah. get back together. And she said, girls, I can't be with someone that isn't going to recognize what they did and say they're sorry. Wow. She had forgiven him. Yeah. So again, it wasn't about that, but she wasn't going to yeah. date him until he acknowledged until what he acknowledged. Yeah. And, you know, he's a little slow. <laughs> so, but he got it in there a few days before she passed away. He's, my sister and I got to be in the room at Christopher House in Austin before we moved my sister to my mom's house to ultimately just pass away. But he was there stroking what little hair she had left. And he said, Judy, I'm, I'm sorry. And I think for him, it was a switch and a transition of now he's turning that course at 70 something years old to try to live well. Yeah. Which that is so beautiful because we all mess up. Yes. Like your dad, he really messed up. He messed up. My mom messed up. Exactly. So no one's living perfect here, but he did have that opportunity. And I think it's it's one of my favorite stories ever told on the show. So thanks for resharing it. (laughs) Yeah. No, I hope people go check it out. And then 
I hope they check out your book, You Be You, and especially towards the end as you wrap it up with that and your yeah. friend and the tragic loss that that, yeah. that was for you and kind of how her story now is going to affect yeah. other people through your heart and your words. And I'm sure all a ripple effect through tons of other people right. that she impacted. Yeah. And then that's how she can be used. Just yeah. how now my mom is used with Pimp and Joy and yeah. she would freak out with all of that. <laughs> right. She probably doesn't. She never really liked that it was pimping, but yeah. her legacy has helped so many people. Yeah. And yeah. your friend's legacy, legacy yep. is doing that. And one day, and we you all will want do the that. Same. Right. Yeah, yep. for your kids, for, for your kids, husband, for whoever. For, yeah. whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Stashira had a homework assignment the other night. It was all about influence uh -huh. and how, ways your influence. And it was like five different questions about how are you influenced here and where do you influence here and where do you. And so she's like, Mom, where do I get my influence? And they're at home so much, obviously, because of coronavirus, and they just started back school. So they have a few friends, but we're not really all hanging out. Yeah. But I kind of thought, oh, gosh, like we are her main influence. Yes. I was like, me, dad, <laughs> like how you, you know, it, so it's that's such a, I don't know why that just popped in my head, but it's a heavy responsibility. Yeah. I want to influence her as best as I can, but I also want her to grow up to be yeah. whoever and yeah. whatever woman she mm -hmm. is supposed to be. Yeah. And I can do my best with that. But I I know I want her to live well uh -huh. and her to leave yes. a legacy. Like we're thinking about ourselves and our friends too, but then we have these future generations of It's exactly, exactly right. So much. And you to can think be about. faithful to the people that you influence right in front of you. Yeah. Right under your roof. Right under your roof. <laughs> well, I love that, Jamie. And thank you so much for coming by. I'm Thanks, glad Amy. you were in Nashville. Me too. I know you're gonna are you gonna have you been over to Annie Downs yet? I'm heading there next. You're heading there now. So you can check out Jamie on Annie's podcast because she's amazing too. So you've I know you've got a busy day, so yeah. I'll let you get going. And I'm so excited for this book, You Be You. Thank you. All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids SPF 50 plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. In every pair of Tacova's boots, you can expect handmade quality, first wear comfort, and timeless Western style. Tacova's boots are always made from premium bovine and exotic leathers, and with occasional resoling, they're going to last a lifetime. The best way to shop for boots is at your local Tacova store, where you're going to be greeted by the smell of fresh leather and a friendly smile. So come on in, grab a cold one, get fitted by a pro, and shop the latest styles. Visit tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S.com. And don't go gently, y'all. You've probably heard a lot about electrified vehicles lately. Well, Toyota has electrified options for every lifestyle. We've got hybrids, no plug right, needed. Let's go. But we also have plug in hybrids if that's your thing. <laughs> you can even go 100% electric in the Toyota BZ4X. With so many options for reducing carbon emissions, Toyota is electrified, diversified. Oh, oh, oh. Learn more about our Beyond Zero vision for the future at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Are you feeling overwhelmed by anxiety, struggling to find restful sleep, or plagued by a restless inability to focus? It's time to break free from the chains of mental health challenges and discover a path to healthy living. Welcome to Amen University, founded by renowned psychiatrist and brain health expert, Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Amen, alongside a team of esteemed doctors and experts in their fields, understands the struggles you're facing and are here to offer solutions. From debilitating anxiety to sleepless nights filled with worry, our courses are meticulously crafted to target these specific challenges head on. Join us on a journey of transformation led by Dr. Amen and a roster of top tier professionals. Say goodbye to the constant battle with your mind and embrace a future filled with hope and possibility. Visit our website today to explore our courses and start your journey towards a brighter tomorrow. Use code BRAIN10 and get 10% off. That's code BRAIN10 and get 10% off your first purchase. Amen University, because your mental health 
matters. 